Shalom and welcome to this edition of Revealing the Truth, where we cover the headlines, the heartlines, and biblical truth. I'm your host, the Reverend Rabbi Eric Walker. Have your thoughts been limiting you from experiencing all that God has in store for you? Have you been thinking big, asking big, expecting big, and receiving big? If not, our next guest wants you to cross over from the old life to the new life God has already planned for you. Danette Crawford is a powerful speaker, author, TV host, and international evangelist with a refreshing message of hope and encouragement. She's got a master's degree in counseling from Regent University. She's the founder and president of Danette Crawford Ministries, which includes its outreach arms, Joy Ministries Evangelical Association. The ministry organizes inner city work with over 22 different compassion programs dedicated to sustainable aid through education and mentoring programs assistance for at-risk youth and low-income families, and programs for single mothers, including Cars for Moms, back-to-work programs, and the Father's House. Danette's television program, Hope for Today with Danette Crawford, is broadcast weekly into over 250 million homes, airing on ABC, CBS, TBN, WHT, TCT, CTN, NRB, Good Life 45, Atlanta 57, and the Dove Network. She's the author of several books. Her story of starting an international television ministry and national outreach program, all while raising her daughters as a single mom, has brought inspiration to millions. The heart of everything that she does is to change lives and to show others that they can overcome any difficulty that comes their way. Here to discuss her new release, Limitless Thinking, Limitless Living, Think Big, Ask Big, Expect Big, and Receive Big is Danette Crawford. Danette, welcome to Revealing the Truth. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. You have a powerful testimony and a powerful story, and we always like to give our guests the opportunity to tell us where it all began for them, to tell us the genesis of their life and what it was that they either broke through, came out of, were raised for, called for, and what the original story is. And oftentimes we find that it might be 20 or 25 years since on national television or global television, they've gotten a chance to tell their story. Well, I want to say that I was raised in the country in the little state of Maryland on a farm and uh, went to church at a Methodist church a couple times a year with my family, basically Christmas and Easter. But at the age of 17, I did what I said I would never do. I said I would never go to the Pentecostal church, to the crazy Holy Roller church. I went to the church and my life totally changed. And so I got saved. I gave my life to Jesus at the age of 17. At the age of 19, I became the youth pastor there and started traveling as an evangelist at the age of 21. So the last thing that I ever expected uh, was to be a single mom. I traveled in ministry as an evangelist full-time for many years during graduate school and after graduate school, even during my college years. And uh, the last thing I ever expected to be was a single mom. But when my daughter, when I was pregnant with my daughter, five days before I delivered my daughter, my husband announced to me that he was leaving. So overnight, everything changed and I became a single mom. That's quite a uh, shock. And the natural response would be fear, worry, trepidation. But from everything I can tell about you, that fear, worry, and trepidation may have been in your face, but you found a way to cross over to the other side of it and embrace it as a God-ordained opportunity. What was it about you, your upbringing, your faith that empowered you and enabled you to be able to cross over to the other side of this challenge that you're facing and press on, press through, and rise up to the levels that you have? I had to make the choice every single day not to quit in my pit. That was my first book, Limitless Thinking, Limitless Living is my fifth book. My first book is my testimony called Don't Quit in the Pit. And I had to make a decision every single day that I was going to take steps forward. And the Lord would say to me, Danette, just because he got out of my will, don't you get out of my will. You know, every day I had to make goals and set goals. And some days my goal was to get up, get out of bed, take a shower and put on my makeup. 
because I was so devastated emotionally. All the emotions of having a baby, all the emotions that you have with caring for a new, newborn, my first child ever. Then here I was with all of this on top of that. So I had to make the decision and I had to make a choice every single day. I'm going to go forward and I'm going to run towards God and not run away from God. So many times people at the time that they need to run to God the most, they run away from him. What was it that was in you? Uh, you're young. So as far as this maturity and the Lord is concerned, uh, you didn't have all the years. Uh, you were put into ministry pretty, pretty quickly, uh, which carries a lot of weight and responsibility in itself. Uh, it's one of the admonitions of the Bible is don't take a new believer and put him in a ministry position. It, it's really a recipe for many challenges. And I'm sure it became a recipe for some challenges in your own walk, in your own life, and your own learning and growth. You were growing along with the youth uh, almost at a similar pace in preparation. And as often as we, we minister, we minister to ourselves first. And so this was part of your process. But here you're faced with marriage, you're faced with the first child, and you make the very intentional decision to pursue what God has for you, baby in tow. You know what I, what I love? What you just asked, you said, what was it in you that made you keep going? You know, it's, it's funny that you asked that. When I was a new Christian, I would see everyone that could sing and play the piano and they would have all of these things that I would be, they have all these gifts. And I was like, Lord, I don't have any gifts. And what the Lord said to me, he said, Danette, your gift is determination. I had no idea what he meant, but I'm telling you, Rabbi, it was Holy Ghost determination that I, that rose up within me that refused to refuse to quit and just caused me to press on. And, you know, God, I believe, gives us all of the gifts and the talents that we need and what I needed. I, I was preaching in a, in a world that was not cool for women to minister way back in the day. And so all of the challenges that I went through in life, my gift of determination, Holy Spirit determination, not determination in my own strength, but knowing that through Christ I could do all things, that's really what kept me going. Perseverance in yes. the trial is what builds maturity, which is why God has opened so many doors for you is because you were faithful with what he gave you. You know, so many times people are jealous of others' gifts. They're jealous that they don't have a gift, but your gift was perseverance. Your gift was determination. And because of that, you looked at what uh, challenges that came before you and the natural inclination is to curse the obstacle. This is the standard response, is I can't believe this is happening to me, but right. yet your breakthrough, your blessing is on the other side of breakthrough. Mm -hmm. And when you press through that obstacle, you will find that there is a new blessing waiting for you on the other side of that obstacle, and your perspective begins to change, and when obstacles come, it almost is invigorating. I know that in my almost 67 years of life, 22 of those as a believer, I've come to look at obstacles as God's gift to me to say the prize is on the other side and you're going to have to press through and endure in order to grab a hold of the prize that I have for you. And yeah. like Paul, not that I've accomplished this, but this I do, forgetting what's behind, I do press on and I know that Danette Crawford does as well. And this is a very strong biblical model that you grabbed a hold of and it's a strong biblical model that also is at the core of this new work. Now, this new work is not a radical change from your testimony. This is an expansion of what you've been building on to finally have this breakthrough of thinking bigger, asking bigger, receiving bigger, living bigger. And it's not a false mountaintop to mountaintop, glory to glory, uh, televangelism, sensational message that, uh, and if it was, you wouldn't be on this show because we're about biblical truth. We're not about the sensational, but we are about the supernatural. 
And what you've embraced here are supernatural truths that you can have limitless thinking. You know, years ago, people said to me, I don't uh, color inside the box. I don't live inside the box. And I said, why would I? Inside the box is only this big. Outside the box is all of this. Why would I ever want to live in a box? Yet so many are confined by structure, by doctrine, by pastors, by family members, by friends, by self, but none of them are held captive by God. And this is part of your message. So what are some of the things that we can do to embrace the, li this limitless lifestyle, this limitless thinking? Well, number one, I believe that most of us need to be set free to think big because living, limitless living starts with limitless thinking. The Bible says that as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And so many times we're limited about how we see ourselves, And so then we limit what we believe that our big God can do for us. And so if we have limitless or limited thinking about ourselves we automatically limit our thinking of what we believe that our God can do in us, through us, and for us. So that's where it all starts. It's really a shift of our mindset where our mind is often set at a place of limited thinking. When we live a life of limited thinking, don't we limit God? Aren't we putting God in that box that's been framed for us, that picture of Jesus, that has a frame around it. Jesus can't be confined by a frame. He can't be confined by an artist rendering. Uh, he is as big as creation and God is the creator. Why do we buy into, why is it easy for us to fall into the trap? Because it is a trap. And it's a trap that's been set for us that we should not have all that God were not worthy. Okay, we've gotten that message. All of our righteousness is like filthy rags before the Lord. Okay, all of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Okay, that's been taken care of because the price has been paid for that. So if the price has been paid for that, if the tab has been covered, why am I not saying, okay, then if that's all taken care of, then God still has all that He promised me in the Garden of Eden, all that he's promised me upon the millennial reign, all that he's promised me in the new heaven, in the new earth, why can I not have that now? Well, and the, the reason that we think all of this, it goes back to how we feel about ourselves. Low self-esteem, most of the time, is the root of small thinking for us. And then that translates to our big God. So we need to really allow the Holy Spirit to reveal to us past things even that are holding us back now. You know, the children of Israel, when they were crossing over from the bondages of Egypt and they were going into the promised land, when they, they came up, you know, they're spying out the land and they're like, oh my gosh, they saw themselves as grasshoppers. We've got to get rid of the grasshopper mindset and we need to allow the Lord to renew our minds. And that comes from us getting in the word, knowing what the word of God says about us, that's the very foundation and the beginning space, place to launch out of there. Danette, you have accomplished so many things. Best-selling author, uh, well-known television personality. When did you break through the stereotype, the limitations, the uh, boundaries that people artificially established for you that made you not wear the electric shock collar that they put on dogs, that they put this wire fence, this invisible fence in. When did you remove the collar? And when did you say there are no boundaries, there are no borders, there is, it is unlimited, which means it is limitless? You know, I believe that it's a process because uh, that we're continually going to the next level. God takes us from glory to glory, from one level to the next. How I started writing this book was, it was after I had already had a television program on 10 different major networks, after I had already written four books, all of these things. And God said, Danette, you're thinking too small. 
And I had just worked very hard for, gosh, 20 years to get to my goals. And God says, okay, now I, he had given me the goal to do this and to do this and to raise my daughter. And he goes, now you're thinking too small. What happens is we come to a little plateau. Sometimes we, it's just like the situation that I was faced with overnight, my whole world came crashing around me and I became a single mom. So I had to persevere through that level. Then you get to the next level, but see, it's really limitless. Don't limit God. Maybe you've already met the goals that you've had. Well, God wants to take you from glory to glory. He wants you to do greater things. And like when we, when we transferred over and started going on secular networks, ABC and CBS, that was a whole new realm for us. And so there's always more. I love the story of Jabez. Jabez, even though he was born in pain, the Bible says that he was more honorable than his brothers. For us to be honorable in the sight of God, we have to live a life of honor. We need to honor others in our lives and honor others above ourselves. And so when we have a lifestyle that's very honorable in the eyes of the Lord, Jabez, even though he was born in pain, he cried out to God and said, Oh, Lord, bless me indeed. Enlarge my territory. Let the hand of the Lord be upon me. Keep me from evil. And then the word says that God granted him his request. God wants us to cry out to him to be used big, to do big things for the kingdom of God. Not our benefit, but for kingdom benefits. And I believe that when we cry out continually to go to the next level, God will release it when our heart is right. It goes right back to the self-inflicted, self-imposed limitations of I'm not worthy, I'm not qualified, uh, I don't have the resources. You know, we have a very similar story to yours here at our broadcasting network. We're the only other Christian broadcasting network headquartered out of Birmingham, Alabama. Ten people came to me over ten days and said, the Lord's given me a vision for you and here's a check, and this is what the vision is for. On the 10th day, a man came to me and said, I have a building, I want to build you a television studio, and I don't want to charge you a thing for it. And I had a producer that traveled with me who was my videographer as I traveled around teaching and doing conferences. And uh, this was established literally by a vision of God who miraculously did this, and we never once said, we don't know how, we've never done it before. I was in the pulpit, uh, I was doing talk radio, and yet God birthed something, and we never once questioned it, because I'd already been through that process before of leave your home and go to the place I will send you, that Abraham calling. You've had the same kind of calling and the same kind of faith walk, where God has led you to places where you were not qualified, you were not equipped, you did not have the resources, you were not prepared, you went by faith, and faith alone was what was the key to unlimited opportunity. Is this really the challenge is that our faith is limited, not just our self-worth, not just our self-image, but our faith is fractured and we don't believe in how big God really is. Right, yeah, so the first is the root. It's usually the root of it, okay? Then we get, but absolutely it's our faith and God wants us to have limitless faith. If we don't have faith, we won't even ask God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. So we need to get a now word. This book, Limitless Thinking, Limitless Living, it is a now word for Christians around the world for non-believers around the world. And absolutely, we need to exercise our faith. We need to be willing to take that leap of faith. And as we do, we will see God meet us right there and do the supernatural, things that we we would think there it's impossible. You know, God does the impossible. I was diagnosed and I, I had a broken back when my daughter was just little. And it was May, 2001. And I went to a surgeon, Dr. Donald Chan, over at UVA. He was the same surgeon that operated on Christopher Reed, Superman. He told me that I needed two major surgeries in my back. I had no T10 vertebrae, it was 100% compressed fracture. They were gonna need to deflate my lungs, take out a rib, grind it down and make a vertebrae. 
That was one surgery. And the other surgery was they were going to have to put a metal rod in my back. I said, I'm going to have to pray about this. Don't ever let anybody cut on you until you get a word from God. And I believe in doctors. I believe that God can use doctors, of course. But I had to get a word from God. So I asked Dr. Chan. I said, Dr. Chan, do you believe in miracles? And he said, no. And I said, well, I do. And I've got to pray because if God wants to use you to bring the miracle in my life, okay. But I needed a miracle because my back was broken. They said that I could easily be paralyzed. I was headed to Israel on a trip. They said, you better not go. I went, long story short, God told me not to have the surgery that he was gonna do a miracle. And God did a total miracle in my back. I went back, Dr. Donald Chan looked at the x-rays. He looked at the two and he said, oh my gosh, where did you get this miracle? He said, did, did, I said, Jesus gave me my miracle. He said, did it happen here in Charlottesville, Virginia? I said, no, actually it happened in Hampton, Virginia. But Jesus does miracles all over the world. It was supernatural. It, we have to get out of the box of our thinking. And God released that miracle in my life. Then, the few years later that I was in a car accident, a drunk driver ran a red light, totaled the car that I was in. Long story short, I had to go to um, a neurosurgeon. And they were checking me out. And the neurosurgeon, this is what he does for a living, Rabbi. He looked at the x-ray and he said, who did your surgery at T10? It is picture perfect surgery. I said, Jesus did my surgery. He is the great physician. That's limitless living. When you step over to the place of seeing God move in the miraculous. All I can say is amen. I've, <laughs> I've seen it with my own eyes. Yes. I was 70% deaf at 38 years old. Wow. I had Meniere's disease, and they didn't have cochlear implants at that time. I had a three-year-old daughter and was about to enroll in American Sign Language School so that both of us could learn to communicate with each other because her daddy was going to be 100% deaf by the time she was eight years old. And God did a miracle, and my hearing's 100% restored. So Thanks, I know about miracles. I know about big faith and big beliefs in a big God. And that is the message in this book by Dana Crawford, Limitless Thinking, Limitless Living, Think Big, Ask Big, Expect Big, and Receive Big. And you're hearing from the two live testimonies of two that have experienced thinking big and living a limitless life. This life is available for you because this is a now word. This is a word for today. And if you're looking for breakthrough, if you're looking for revival, we're not talking about a community. We're not talking about a city. We're not talking about a church. We're talking about you, a revival in you, a new heart, that heart of stone replaced with the heart of flesh, new thinking, a new mind. God wants to bind his mind to your mind. He wants you to see with his eyes and bind his eyes to your eyes. So you might have a vision for your life that is of God vision for you. And you can only see that. You can only experience that by taking this limitless thinking and this limitless living and apply it to your life. We're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we're going to talk more about limitless thinking, limitless living with Dennett Crawford. We'll be right back. Shalom. I'm the Reverend Rabbi Eric Walker, Executive Director of Ignatica Nation and host of the daily TV program, Revealing the Truth, seen live every Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Central Standard Time at www.ianbn.com and then replayed throughout the day and night via our website. All of our segments can be seen on the Igniting a Nation YouTube channel. Since our launch in January of this year, we've expanded our global reach to over 54 countries with a social media following of over 125,000. Our commitment is to bring you the most in-depth interviews with authors, subject matter experts, and thought leaders from around the world. We have interviewed guests from Israel, Brazil, England, India, and all across North America. All of our authors are featured on the Books and Media page on our website, www.ianbn.com. There you can find a direct link to the book you want to order, and we receive a small commission directly from Amazon. There is no cost to you for this service. 
In addition to our daily teachings and interviews, we make available to you the archive of all of the interviews on our YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram channels. Our live program is available from our homepage and there is never a charge to you for any of this access. We made the decision long ago that we would remain a commercial free resource that would not be influenced by any pressure from any outside company. There are only two ways that we are able to continue to operate this ministry and provide you with the only live four hour daily Christian television talk show program. The first is through your support and tax deductible contributions to Igniting a Nation. These can be made directly through the donate button on the website or sent through the mail to Igniting a Nation, 2700 Corporate Drive, Suite 120, Birmingham, Alabama, 35242. The other way we support the program is by offering you a unique opportunity to have access to over 10 years worth of teachings on a subscription basis. The teaching archives contains all of my prior sermons, Torah studies, prophecy in the news videos, and much more for the low subscription price of $5 per month. This subscription grants you unlimited access to over 800 hours of content not available elsewhere and is updated weekly with the most current prophecy classes. In addition to 20 hours of original TV programming each weekday, we invite you to join us live every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday evenings for our Prophecy in the News classes. The times and locations are listed on our events page on the website www.ianbn.com. Every day you and I are faced with the challenge of where we will go to hear the truth. We are committed to bring you the only program of its kind that covers the headlines, the heartlines, and biblical truth. We cannot do this without your support. Since we launched on January 5th, 2017, we have aired over 300 individual teachings, interviews, and commentaries not available anywhere else. We are now working side by side with almost every major Christian publishing house to bring you the most in-depth feature interviews possible. Our one-hour features address every subject that affects the believer's life. We are hearing of salvations from the Middle East, Africa, and all across the United States. Lives are being changed every day, and we have only just begun. Our mission is to become your trusted resource and grant you access to the people, tools, and information you need to grow in your relationship with the Lord. You can help us by liking us on social media and through your financial support. We know you have many choices in who you support, but we are prayerfully asking you to consider helping us keep revealing the truth, true to our calling, to cover the headlines, the heartlines, and biblical truth like no other program available. Donate today and help us bring the message to the four corners of the earth. Visit www.ianbn.com and donate, buy a book, or subscribe to our teaching archives. Without you, we do not exist. Shalom. I'm the Reverend Rabbi Eric Walker, Executive Director of Ignatic Nation and host of the daily TV program Revealing the Truth, seen live every Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Central Standard Time at www.ianbn.com and then replayed throughout the day and night via our website. All of our segments can be seen on the Ignatic Nation YouTube channel. Since our launch in January of this year, we've expanded our global reach to over 54 countries with a social media following of over 125,000. Our commitment is to bring you the most in-depth interviews with authors, subject matter experts, and thought leaders from around the world. We have interviewed guests from Israel, Brazil, England, India, and all across North America. All of our authors are featured on the Books and Media page on our website, www.ianbn.com. There you can find a drink. Shalom and welcome back to this edition of Revealing the Truth, where we cover the headlines, the heartlines, and biblical truth. I'm your host, the Reverend Rabbi Eric Walker, and we're talking with Danette Crawford, author of Limitless Thinking, Limitless Living, Think Big, Ask Big, Expect Big, and Receive Big. Danette, welcome back to the program. 
Thank you so much for having me. Danette, I go on this journey with you. I begin to take a t hard look at uh, crossing over. I do the preparation. I overcome these perceived limitations that I think that I have, that I'm not good enough, I'm not qualified. I don't have the resources. I'm all alone in this. I'm not anointed. And then I come to these self-imposed limitations of distractedness and the things yeah. that are going to come rolling in the tumbleweeds is what I like to refer to them. I'm barreling down the highway and a tumbleweed comes across the road and I don't know if it's a bull elephant. I don't know what it is. I screech on my brakes. My car spins out and then I take a look and it's just a tumbleweed that's coming along and it seems so much bigger, but it was enough to derail me. Is this one of the things I need to look out for when I begin to embrace limitless thinking and limitless living? Absolutely. You know, I believe uh, that focus is so critical for all of us. And I always say we must be fine tuned in our focus. You know, you can be very focused, but focused on the wrong thing and take a detour out of the will of God for your life. But when we are fine tuned in our focus, uh, focusing on the finish line of what God has told us to do and called us to do. You know, all of us have an assignment for God. And when we stand before the Lord, we're going to give an account for our assignment. I'm not going to give an account for your assignment or what you were supposed to do. I'm going to give an account for my assignment. And I believe that we all must be fine-tuned in our focus. We can get distracted and we can waste 30 years of our life. We can try to do things in our own strength and in our own abilities. And we can be distracted by, by even those good things that we wanted to do for the kingdom. But as we are fine-tuned in our focus, we can cross the finish line successfully, meet those God-inspired goals, and continue to, to be encouraged. You know, when you get off track of what God has called you to do, when you're distracted from that focus, it is very discouraging. When you get off of what you're supposed to be doing, that in itself is a downhill spiral to discouragement, can even lead to depression, but staying focused on our call and our purpose. When you came across the obstacles to, and, and it's interesting, this is your fifth book, and this is the one that's the breakthrough for you, uh, you take a look at your life and say, how, how could it get any bigger? How could it become more limitless? Uh, what was it in your life that caused you to grab a hold of this and say, wait a second, this is a now book for me, and it's a now book for the body of Christ? Well, the Lord kept saying to me, Danette, you're thinking too small. And I was like, well, what do you mean? You're thinking too small. And he said it to me about three times, and then I was in a large revival meeting, and a guest speaker called me out of about 5,000 people and said, you on the front row, you with the blonde hair, God's saying to you, you're thinking too small. After God said that, I thought, you know, this is really a big deal. He's really trying to get the point across here. And I started really seeking the Lord, and that's what the book came out of. And God said, Danette, you, you, you have done this. These, these have been your goals. You've accomplished what I told you to, but you're thinking too small. See, what happens is sometimes success can be a great enemy because then we want to, you know, just kind of put it in a neutral and just kind of coast because we've worked so hard for 20 years. God says, no, I have more land for you to take. When the children of Israel crossed over out of the bondage of Egypt into the promised land, what did they face? They faced war with the enemy. The war that they faced was in the natural. The war that we face, it's in the spirit. They fought the enemy, why? Over the land or the territory. The battle that we fight in the spirit is over the land and over the territory. You know, we have 10 adopted neighborhoods here in Hampton Roads, Virginia. We're in the highest crime areas of our cities. We're in the Bronx in New York. We are expanding into Compton, the south side of LA, and also the south side of Chicago with our hope centers. We're taking the land for the kingdom of God. And you've got to think big to go into the enemy's camp and to take that land back for the kingdom of God. Jeanette, here, here you are 
and you add a component in the very end of discovering true limitless living means that you have to be consecrated unto the Lord. That part of this is not just purity, uh, not just integrity, but really consecrated unto the Lord. What does that look like from a real life perspective? Well, number one, there cannot be sin in the camp. It starts with this camp. We've got to live a holy life, not legalism, holiness. You know, legalism says take off the makeups and the earrings. That's easy to do. The hard thing is the heart, and God cares about the heart. It's not about legalism. It's about heart. And God wants us to live a life of holiness, Christian character, no sin in the camp. That's the beginning. When you have that, then you open yourself up for having that relationship, opens yourself up to real limitless living with God. Then we have to live a life of being separated and consecrated. We have to have union and communion with God the Father. That takes time. Where, what's your prayer life like? We've got to have a prayer life with God. We've got to stay in contact with the Lord. You know, my most important thing of my whole ministry of everything I do is my time with the Lord. Everything comes out of that. So I can't be so busy doing the work of the ministry that I can't minister unto the Lord in prayer. That's the most important thing. So we've got to live a life separated from the world, consecrated in the things of God, and we've got to spend time with Him. We've got to be in His presence. And that's in His presence that He'll speak to you. And the, the number one person that He speaks to you about is you. Because I always say, I'm a full-time job. You know, we, we think we got to look at everybody else. No, it starts here. It starts right here. Revival starts in the heart, then goes to your home, then it goes to the house of God, your local church, and then it goes to the highways and the byways. When you talk about loving without limit, this is more than just love the Lord with all your heart, with all your strength, and all your might. This is more than just love the stranger and the homeless and the widowed and the orphaned. This has to do and start with the love of self that allows you to be able to receive the love of God so that he can trust you to be an ambassador, an emissary, a minister of reconciliation, as Paul calls us. How do we get to that point where we love without limit? That is the selfless life that was the model of Jesus. Well, it's very true. If you don't love yourself, you have a very hard time loving others, love and, and accepting the love of the Father. Most of us grow up, grew up without a father in the home, most of us, and, and the statistics show it. So number one, we have got to really embrace it. And too many times Christians and believers, they've got the knowledge here, but they don't have it here. And honestly, it takes a while. It takes a while for it to get from here, head knowledge to heart knowledge. And I believe then that we need to be the example of the, the heart and arms of God extended to other people where we show the love of God. Love is the most, after you're saved, the most important thing I believe is your love walk. Yes, we need to go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, but your love walk preaches more and louder than anything else. You know, Danette, when we first opened up our conversation, you said you start out in a Methodist church you wound up going to a Pentecostal church, and there you got filled with the Holy Spirit. And in your book, you talk about the Holy Spirit being the cornerstone of limitless living. Uh, the church today does not talk about the Holy Spirit. Uh, the power and the anointing uh, only comes through the Holy Spirit. It is an essential part, this paraclete, this advocate, this strengthener, this comforter, this counselor. Uh, we, we cannot do it in our own strength. And when we talk about doing it in Jesus' strength, we're talking about something that is heavens away. And it is, although the Word of God is supernatural, we have something tangible and real to rest and trust upon that is a source. It is the largest uh, uninterruptible power source that's ever been given to mankind, yet we've diminished it to the point and relegated it to what the Pharisees did when they accused Jesus of casting out demons in the name of Beelzebub, and he took them to task for it because they questioned the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. 
How do we grab that back to those who in our, our audience that are going to traditional churches that don't have, have probably never even heard the words the Holy Spirit? They have only heard Jesus only, Jesus only, Jesus only. But the power that in Luke 10, 19 that Jesus gave us, he said, I give you the authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing whatsoever shall harm you. That authority was in the person of the Holy Spirit. How do we grab a hold of that and have this limitless life? Well, you know, so many times what we do is we just read part of the Bible. Acts chapter 2 talks about the power of the Holy Spirit. And throughout the word, it says exactly what you're saying. All power and all authority has been given to us in the name of Jesus. You know, I can say, all right, I have a light here and I need to flip on the light. Well, I can walk over there and flip on the light, but without the electricity, the light's not going to come on. It's the power source. So the Holy Spirit is the power source that makes things happen. You know, when, when uh, David took down the giant Goliath, it really wasn't the stone that took him down. It was the power of the Holy Spirit behind the stone that took him down. And the reason a lot of Christians and a lot of believers are discouraged, they're depressed. We have, we have people leading churches and pastors that are depressed and discouraged because they're trying to rely on their own abilities and their own strength. God taught me as a very young evangelist, don't try to do in the flesh what can only be done by the power of the Holy Spirit because you will be discouraged, you'll be depressed, you'll want to give up, you'll feel like throwing in the towel, and then the enemy wins. I think that one of the biggest lies ever, one of the biggest lies ever is to convince believers not to have anything to do with the power of the Holy Spirit. It is the power source. We need the Holy Spirit greater than ever before in these last days. As we come to the end of your book, you commend others to lead others into the land. And this is the action. This is the faith without works. This is the hands and feet. This is taking what God has given you. He's now given you a new mind. He's given you a new universe, a new sphere of thinking, a new limitless attitude, a new limitless opportunity. But now, it's a calling. It's not a way of thinking. It's not uh, uh, um, the power of positive thinking. This is the God-mindedness of embracing something. And he always says, go out. Uh, he yeah. never says, stay in. He always right. says, go out. And you have that message in leading others into the land. What is it that you want to charge people with here? You know, it's all about getting our eyes off of ourselves. God told me years ago when my husband first left and I had a little newborn baby and God said, you keep your eyes on me and your heart on the needs of my people because there's always somebody hurting worse than you. There's always somebody going through more than you're going through. It was a real key for me to get out of my pity party, to get out of my pit and stay out of my pit and get on the path to God's purpose for my life and to stay there. Was we got to get our eyes off of ourselves, keep our eyes on Jesus and our heart on the needs of God's people. You know, one way is for you to look all around you. There are people hurting that there are people that need Jesus. And us leading the people to cross over to take the land is us helping them cross over to come into God's full potential for their life. The first step of that is salvation. You know, I travel a whole lot. I just got off a plane two days ago. I get on a plane another two days, flying across the country, ministering. I can never be so busy doing the Lord's work that I miss somebody in that airport. God said to me years ago, so what if you miss the flight? You can catch another flight, but you'll never have this another, another moment in time to witness to this person who needs Jesus. And you know what? We need to love out loud by our actions. And that is to go ye. And that's to look at the people all around us, whether it's in Walmart, whether it's in the grocery store, whether it's in the airport, your neighbor next door, the gas station. We have got to show the love of God, leading people to Jesus and then encouraging them to come to their full potential in God. We have a habit of looking backwards where we don't learn much lesson from Lot's wife. We tend to dwell on the past. Um, we 
do all these things that hinder us. Mm -hmm. And I remember the expression from World War II, I've met the enemy and the enemy is us. Uh, how do we get out of our own way and really fully embrace this? What, what is it that we can do that can get us out of our own way? You know, first we gotta just take a step of faith because that, that, that goes against our flesh. So number one, the power of the Holy Spirit enables us <coughs> to walk in love and live like Jesus. But we have to take a step of faith to do it. We have to say goodbye comfort zone to say hello to our potential zone. Getting your eyes off of yourself, putting action behind that. Find somebody, you know what I did? I went to my little pantry, which I hardly had anything. And I took what little groceries I did have. And I went to a very poor neighborhood in our city and I gave my groceries away to these single moms. You know, as I was taking action, a, a, a faith step of action, God met me there. And then you know what? There's nothing more exciting than le leading somebody to Jesus. There's nothing more exciting really than helping somebody else. And what it did is I got out of my pit. I gave my way out of the pit. I prayed my way out of the pit. And I praised my way right out of the pit. We've got to keep worshiping the Lord. Stop thinking about all the problems and all the things that we're going through. Stop talking about and focusing on what you don't have and start focusing on what you do have. And worship God and thank Him for it. Jeanette, you are in many places and in many areas of impact. How can people reach you? How can they get a download of some of this information? How can they partner with you? How can they join together with you? How can they find out where your program, uh, your television program is aired, Hope for Today? Uh, I know that our audience loves you and wants to connect with you. How can they do that? Thank you. DanetteCrawford.com, Danette, D-A-N-E-T-T-E, -T -T -E, Crawford, C-R-A-W, FORD.com, Danette Crawford.com. You can go on there. Also, uh, you can connect with us. Also, if you text the word limitless to the number 72523, that's 72523, text the word limitless, you'll get a free download of my book. Um, also, a free download from my book. And you can also order it. You can get it at Barnes and Noble, Books a Million. Uh, even Walmart, walmart.com, any bookstore across the nation and around the world that are selling books. And including ignitingnation.com, and you can go to today's date and see the cover, which is bright, bold, and exactly the life that's laying ahead for you is bright and bold, just like the cover of this book. Go to ignitingnation.com, click on Books and Media, scroll down to today's date, and you're going to find the next book right there. Click on it. It'll take you right to Amazon. You can get it in Kindle. You can get it in paperback. You can get it in every way, including, I believe, audio uh, is available in the Kindle version. The book is entitled Limitless Thinking, Limitless Living, How to Think Big, <coughs> Ask Big, Expect Big, and Receive Big, all according to God's will and God's plan for your life. Imagine five days before giving birth. <coughs> Excuse me. Getting the message that your husband was leaving you. And out of that <clears throat> trauma is birthed a ministry that affects over 250 million people. That lives are being changed, children are being fed, mothers are getting cars. There are ministries out there that are being impacted on a daily basis, and lives are being changed all because bad news was delivered and the victory was in Danette's response. It was not in the message. It was not in the circumstance. It was in how she grabbed a hold of what God had grabbed a hold of for her. She was the woman with the issue of blood who reached out and touched the hem of his garment, but instead of just touching it, she refused to let go. And over the course of these last 20 or 25 years, she has had a breakthrough life, an exemplary breakthrough life that has been glorifying and edifying to the kingdom. And she's fulfilled exactly that command, let your light so shine that man would see your good works and bring glory to your Father in heaven. 
This book is one more step along this journey, but the key that unlocks the door to all of the good gifts that God has for you, where you can live a limitless life by having limitless thinking, and all that's contained in these pages. Danette Crawford, thank you so much for sharing your story here with us on Revealing the Truth. Thank you so much for having me. God bless you, my friend. We're going to take a short break, yep. and when we return, we'll bring you the next edition of Revealing the Truth.